Thanks for joining us for today's episode of The Capitalist Investor. I'm Mark Tepper. I'm here with my boy D, Derek Gabrielson. Mark, what's going on, man? What's up, dude? I am happy to be back in the studio after vacationing for a few weeks. Oh, yeah. COVID free, you know? <laughs> That's the way to be, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a choice, yes, I'd be COVID free. Yep. Um, so look, over the course of the last few weeks, one of the things that I have seen uh, in the media that I want to talk about with you today for all of our listeners is the PPP program. Right. What is it? The Paycheck Protection Program? Yes, is that, sir. Is that what the three P's stand for? Yep. Paycheck mm. Protection Program. So m- the issue that I have with it, um, based on what I've been hearing in the media, is the media and people who don't know any better are essentially targeting anybody that received that money. Okay. Or, or maybe I should say they're targeting anybody that received that money that was not on the verge of bankruptcy. Right. Right. And I was real excited when you sent this to me because I've, I've wanted to talk about this for a while because it is ridiculous what's going on out there. Yeah. There's, there's <clears throat> actually like a shaming campaign, yeah, a, shaming a campaign. smear campaign. Like this Paycheck Protection Program, D, as we know, it was set up to ensure that if your business was adversely affected by COVID, that doesn't mean you were out of business. You, if you were adversely affected by COVID, this was designed to be the alternative to you firing all your people. Right. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> it's that simple. And, you know, we, we, we talked about this early, early on too, right? <clears throat> and I, I, you know, in preparing for this, I just went right to the, the government website, right? So it says the Paycheck Protection Program is a loan designed to provide a direct incentive for small businesses to keep workers on their payroll. Correct. Does it say anything in there about how much money that owner has? It says nothing about that. <laughs> nothing. Does it say anything in there about how successful the business is? Nope. No, it doesn't. And and that seems to be what's going on. And I'm sorry to jump in, but I'm, I'm hot under the collar oh, no, on this let's, one. Let's do this one, man. Let's get it done. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like <clears throat> the, the program when everything went down was really for, hey, instead of you having to lay off all of your employees and have them go on unemployment, and then when all this gets behind us, you know, basically have to rebuild all over again, right? Right. Rather than doing all that, keep these people on the payroll – prove that they're on the payroll and it is a forgivable loan. Correct. Correct. As long as you keep them on payroll. Right. And at, at the, on the, at the outset, I want to say it was like 75 or 80% of it had to go towards payroll right. mm-hmm. of that money. The rest you could use towards rent and other qualified overhead. However, they defined that. Um, but then I think they started to think about all the restaurants and bars that they shut down. Right. Where there literally is close to no, employee related overhead because mm-hmm. these the servers are making two bucks an hour right right they get all their money from tips mm-hmm. and anyone that comes back and says well look at longhorn steakhouse they got a bunch of managers that's the exception to the rule right. bud <laughs> when you we're talking mom and pop restaurants yeah. there's no management team there no. it's the owner operator mm-hmm. and a bunch of servers and bartenders right right so i think they dropped that down to 60 percent right all right from mm-hmm. 75 to make it actually work for the restaurants that were that were shut down right Right. and other other business you know probably salons and stuff like that Mm -hmm. right Right. that are in similar situations um my main issue with this my main issue is that people or businesses who were not unhealthy financially unhealthy prior to covid they're being demonized right I, i don't get it (laughs) <laughs> so you're so in other words, what what this mass of, of Twitter trolls is doing is they're basically saying the only businesses that should have been helped were the ones that were failing. Right. Okay. So let's assume you're running a pretty let's just use restaurants as an example. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's assume the two of us are business partners. We're running we're running a restaurant and we're we're kicking butt, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been running this restaurant for the last five years. Uh, You know, we think we've identified, you know, the perfect cows to make, (laughs) to to provide us with our steaks that we're serving people. Mm -hmm. Um, We're definitely serving steaks. It's definitely a steakhouse, dude, right? (laughs) 
Um, you know, we've prided ourselves on making sure the the environment is is warming. It's a cool place that people want to be. We've prided ourselves on making sure we were providing the best service possible. Mm-hmm. And we're beating the guy down the street who's serving, you know, crappy hamburgers. Right. We're beating him. Mm-hmm. For, and for good reason, we're beating him. Because we're better. Because we're better. Mm-hmm. We worked harder. We put more blood, sweat, and tears into it. And we gained a competitive advantage. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, we're struggling because we can't get anyone to come in and eat our steaks. Dude down the street who's selling crappy burgers, he's struggling. But you're telling me he should get the money and we don't so that the competitive gap that we built over that guy diminishes. Right. He becomes stronger and we, by not getting any help at all, technically become weaker or more in line with our weak competition. Exactly, man. It's That's anti-competitive, <laughs> dude. That's exactly what's happening. So that, this is in my, I don't know, you tell me, maybe, it, maybe it's the popular opinion. I thought it was the unpopular opinion that I came to the defense of businesses that were not on their deathbed. Businesses that were healthy businesses that knew that they were adversely affected by COVID. Their right. revenues were going to go down. Now, were they going to go out of business? No. But they still deserved that to have the same opportunity. We talk about mm-hmm. equality of opportunity right. as being one of the, the premises of capitalism. They still deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the same program that the unhealthy businesses were taking advantage of. Right. And I think you're right. You know, it is, it's not the popular opinion, Right. And, <clears throat> and ho- hopefully we can open some eyes here <laughs> Yeah, seriously. And, and people can understand that this should be the popular opinion. If you are, if you have a competitive advantage, why should you be forced to give up your advantage? It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> right. It's, it's anti capitalism. It, it's anti free market, anti America, everything, yes. everything this country stands for, or at least used to apparently. Let's hope we, let's hope yeah. we get back there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's a, you know, this is probably a whole nother to- uh, topic, but it's just this stream of misinformation that's available on, you know, whatever news outlets or um, social media platform. You know, these aren't, um, you know, this is not a bailout program, right? Correct. In, in that in that situation or the example that you just gave, you know, we're running a restaurant. We didn't choose to close our doors, right? Correct. The Um, government stepped in and shut them. Yeah. So it's not like we went out there and made a bunch of bad business decisions, and now we're looking for government handouts. Right. And I think that's kind of what it's turned into, uh, the perception out there on the street, that 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 is what the PPP loans are. Yeah. And what the, the main purpose of them are is to keep people employed whether they are working at the best restaurant in town or salon or the worst. Yeah. We're trying to get these people uh, to stay on the payroll, keep their benefits. And when we're through this, then, you know, hopefully we can, we can get to the other side. Right. So I, I just, I just don't understand the, the hate and the, the, and the shaming. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, the- it is not the American way <laughs> for the strong to be disadvantaged. Right. Why should the strong be put at a disadvantage just to help the weak? It, it makes no sense. And at, at the expense of people, like yes. these are real people that are going to lose their job, right? <laughs> that, that these are people who are going to lose their job working for companies that were strong companies that right. were going to be there for the, t- and stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. And now they're going to go work for a company who was made better, um, who was about to shut their doors before COVID even right. happened. Exactly. Right. So it just blows my mind, and it leads me to the next thing. I, I want to kind of piggyback off of this and, and talk a little bit about the um, the twelve hundred dollar stimulus check. Mm-hmm. So you know, one of the criticisms of the PPP program is that what did I hear? Um, basically, they targeted a company that already had cash on their balance sheet, mm-hmm. right? So let's assume we've run our restaurant well enough that we've accumulated a war chest mm-hmm. just in case right. we built up a hundred grand or whatever it is, just in case something really bad happened. All of mm-hmm. our cows died and we had no steak, <laughs> right? right? What, mm-hmm. Whatever. Some sort of a disaster recovery program. I have seen people targeting 
those companies who received the PPP money that had cash on the balance sheet. Why should we, restaurant owners, why should we have to burn through the war chest that we've been smart enough to save while the hamburger guy down the street gets money from the government? I, I can't tell you that answer. It, it makes absolutely no sense. Right. <laughs> so going back to the $1,200 stimulus check, was there a balance sheet or debt requirement to get that 1200 bucks? Did you have to be up in your eyeball, up to your eyeballs in debt to get that? No. If you were debt free, making under X dollars, I think it was a hundred or two hundred if you're married. Uh, did you get the money, even if you had no debt? Oh yeah. Yeah, you still got the money. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, come on, people. You know, fight a fair fight if you're going to come up with an argument. <laughs> be logical, right? Um, you need to think these things through. It's it typically w- when you're trying to criticize something, you're only looking at the surface, right? There's 17 things happening underneath the surface (laughs) that you need to take a look at to figure out why the PPP program did not exclude businesses that were healthy. It wasn't meant to be a, it's not a bailout. It was never called a bailout. It was never meant to be a bailout. It was to make sure that people kept their jobs. Right. When the government jumped in when they weren't supposed to and shut us all down. Mm -hmm. It's, it's. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and it's it just kind of feeds into the culture of the, you know, shoot now, ask questions later. It's just like, you know, come on, just do a little bit of research and put a little thought into something yeah. before you just go out there and start smearing people and, and shaming people. And, you know, these business owners are, I forget the, the number, uh, on what the small business um the percentage of the small businesses. Like 26%, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, small the, businesses employ roughly a quarter of the yeah. U.S. working population. So, and, you know, it's it's vital to our economy to keep that machine going. And, right. and that's what this program was designed to do. Right. Nothing um, more, nothing less. And, it was not meant to give an unfair advantage <laughs> to weak companies. Right. And, you know, it's... I'm I'm definitely not one for big government, as you know. You probably know if you if you've been listening to this podcast. But you know they had a what? How how long did they have to roll out this whole entire program between the helicopter days? money and the PPP? It was like you know nine days or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um. You, to be honest with you, I in, under those circumstances, I, I thought the government did pretty well. I I think so too. Now before I forget. I, Maybe you had more you wanted to say there, but that leads me to the next thing I want to talk about. So mm-hmm. I, I want to I want to make sure we talk about that stimulus check. I want to come yep. back to that, mm-hmm. but I also want to talk about just capitalism in general. Mm-hmm. One of the things that has been bugging the crap out of me is when people are they're basically calling, you know, the stimulus checks. They're they're calling the PPP money. They're calling them bailouts. Okay. And they're criticizing them, saying capitalism is dead. Bail out money for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I've been fighting back recently saying, no, 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 you don't understand. Capitalism was overridden when the government entered the game. Yep. There was nothing. Capitalism (laughs) is not dead. It is not broken. Capitalism is not at fault. The government entered the game, shut everyone down, and now they had to make everyone whole right. on their way out. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what capitalism is all about. Not to mention the fact that one of the premises of capitalism is you cannot roll out a program that benefits one group at the expense of another, mm-hmm. which would be benefiting you know, the hamburger guy who's right. you know, almost out of business. At the expense of our our steakhouse, Mm -hmm. which is a great steakhouse, by the way. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 42 ounce tomahawk. uh, We should should do that anyway. I'm sure we can get a good good deal on some uh, some space. The Capitalist Steakhouse. (laughs) Not to be confused with Capital Grill. Yep. Um, Shout out to Capital Grill. They they do a good job. They got great steaks. They do a good job. They do a good job. Um, All right. So the next thing I want to get to is the, the stimulus. Yep. All right. So. I had, a, I had a good conversation with my brother-in-law over the weekend, and he asked me, he's like, what do you think is going to be in the next stimulus package? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what, dude? <laughs> I, I don't want any stimulus at all. Right. Well, just leave the economy open. Why, why should we print another trillion dollars and hand it out to anybody? Like, mm-hmm. just leave the economy open. <laughs> right? there, should be, there should be no more stimulus. Right. I don't want any more stimulus. 
because we're going to have to pay that back. Right. I mean, you kids. know that me, you, our <laughs> kids, all of our listeners, we're going to make an extra one or two percent less per year for the rest of our lives as we pay back all this money that's being handed out. Yeah. We're all going to make less money now. Haven't heard that mentioned once. In, right. And all, you know, the media I've been consuming in the last three months. Well, that's because the media thinks money grows on trees. Oh, yeah. Right. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a good chat with my brother-in-law and he, and he asked about the stimulus package. I said, dude, I hope they don't have any more. There's no need for it. Right. And he's like, I agree. I agree. And then he said, unless it's like towards the people that really need it, you know, <laughs> like a stimulus. If, if you're making less than 40 grand a year, you know, they, get, get them the 1200 bucks. And I said, no, 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 dude, stop. Let me explain something to you. And this was a good conversation. So after he suggested that, he, I, I think I pulled him over to my side here. Mm-hmm. I really? said, yes. You're making progress. I th- yes. I'm, I'm working those <laughs> swing voters right now. <laughs> right, I'm working those swing voters. So I had a conversation with him, and, and the conversation was, look, dude, imagine you've been working at your company for, I don't know, 10 years, and you're making 50 grand a year. And he's like, well, you could use any number you want. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm using a number that's close <laughs> to your 40 grand, dude. Can you just... just Bear with me here, man. Let's go. All right. You're making 50 grand a year. You've been there for 10 years. Another guy comes to work at your company. He's been there five years and he's making 40 grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. All of a sudden the government decides they're going to help your buddy and not you. Okay. So now you busted your butt for 10 years to get to that 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Your buddy only busted his butt for five years. Now he's making as much money as you. How is that fair, dude? He's like, oh, you're right. Boom. You got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. <laughs> right. But that's, that's, yeah, that's the perfect example. How, how, cause basically in my example, the guy who worked for 10 years making 50 grand was disadvantaged, right? He was disadvantaged for his, all the hard work he put into getting to that $50,000 level. The government basically said, we don't care. Mm-hmm. Cause if you only worked five years and we're making 40 grand, we, we'd tell, we'd take care of you. Right. We'd help you. <laughs> exactly rubbish dude rubbish i mean guys economics it's, if you think about it it's actually kind of easy to understand it really it is. just makes sense <laughs> you know yep. it makes sense if you think about it right the econ 101 man that's one of the the few classes that uh, i took in college that you know you can Did, carry forward to yeah, everyday life that's what turned me mm-hmm. I, I was pre-med uh, you know, I was doing four hours of homework freshman year every night and everyone else was drinking beers at noon. Right. So I decided, <laughs> <laughs> I decided I didn't want to do four hours of homework every night anymore. Uh, took my, uh, my econ 101 class, um, second semester freshman year. And that was it, man. I'm like business finance. Like this is yeah. where it's at, mm-hmm. dude. No so doubt. definitely a good move. Um, what else do we need to talk about here, bud, before we wrap this one up? Um, you know, I think we pretty much covered it, but you know, it's, <clears throat> You know, get out there. Just do a little bit of research, man. It's really, um, again, I'm not really a huge proponent of, of, you know, government um, stepping into the playing field. But these are unusual circumstances. And and hopefully, 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 you know, we're going to be moving past it soon. Um, You know, this, the other thing I was thinking of, and since you asked me, I'll just close with this, you know. It, feel, it just feels so much different now than, like, say, 2001, like after 9-11. You know, it feels like everyone was coming together back then. And, and Patriotism. Now, now it feels like everyone's coming apart again. You know, it's it's just we're all American. We, we're all in a very tough situation together. You know, let's try to get through it together. You know, let, let's put a little positivity out there. And, you know, if, if the government's giving... Uh, people, these PPP, uh, these businesses, PPP loans to, to help them get through and keep people employed. You know, we should be supportive of, of, of that rather than going out there and shaming them uh, on social media. Without a doubt, because no one's really shaming the people who took their 1200 bucks and opened a Robin Hood account. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yep. No one's shaming them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's what happened. Oh, yeah. That, that's why people buying Tesla stock on Robin Hood skyrocketed mm-hmm. after the stimulus checks arrived. Yep. Right. So you're anti-capitalist, but all of a sudden you decide you're going to be a capitalist and, and invest like your the, money. the first thing that you do. As soon as you could. <laughs> as soon as you could. First thing you did. Oh, boy. All right, people. So let's remember, capitalism is still alive. Capitalism is not at fault here. Mm-hmm. Um, as you mentioned, D, neither one of us want big government. Right. The government, the only reason the government's involved is because they, 
they forced their way in. Mm -hmm. Now they got to clean up their mess. They created a mess. You can't shut down an economy of our size. And they, it looks like they might do it again. Yep. I mean, by the time this thing's uh, published, we're already going to know what's going on in Ohio because mm -hmm. there's a press conference today at 530, which right. he never does. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we'll be shut down again. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but California's doing it. I mean, they just, they continue to shut stuff down. I was there over 4th of July weekend. They closed the beaches down. Mm -hmm. um, Vegas, and, I think, is getting shut down. Yeah, they're rolling back to phase one or something, yeah, right? Miami, Dade County, not looking good there. Yet, at the same point in time, the, the death percentages and the death numbers continue to trend down. New York just had its first zero death day mm -hmm. in a long time. Yep. But we're shutting everything back down. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes complete sense. All right, folks. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, hit the subscribe button. If, if you're just listening to episodes here and there, you're missing out, man. There's a lot of good stuff coming <laughs> from this show, right? We bring it every week. Um, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, info at swpconnect.com. Uh, or if you look in the show notes, there are ways to shoot Derek a message uh, individually or me a message individually. Uh, YouTube channel is in the show notes. So a lot of good stuff in the show notes. Check that stuff out. As always, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next time.